Good morning. It's Thursday, March 21st, 2019. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, A Little More Light, Part 2, and our scripture is Psalm 63. O God, you are my God. I earnestly search for you. My soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you in this parched and weary land where there's no water. I have seen you in your sanctuary and gazed upon your power and glory. Your unfailing love is better than life itself. How I praise you. I will praise you as long as I live, lifting up my hands to you in prayer. You satisfy me more than the richest feast. I will praise you with songs of joy. I lie awake thinking of you, meditating on you throughout the night. Because you are my helper, I sing for joy in the shadow of your wings. I cling to you. Your strong right hand holds me securely. We're looking this week at the Wesleyan quadrilateral, a term that helps us see a process of theological understanding, a way of thinking about God. This process includes these four, scripture, tradition, experience, and reason. Today, we investigate experience. If you look closely at the experiences of the psalmist with God, you've something of an understanding of what John Wesley meant when he added that word, experience, to his methodology of interpreting the Christian life. The psalmist begins with a soul-thirsting search to be close to God and an encounter with worship and demonstration of God's power. He's tasted of God's love, and he refuses any other life than one lived in God's presence. He has felt the security of strong, everlasting arms. Today, we would simply use the word assurance to describe the relationship that's developed between the psalmist and his creator. In the Christian experience, it's the assurance of forgiveness of sin and the enlightened, cleansed soul that produced Wesley's strangely warmed heart. Reverend David Watson quotes Albert Outler, who coined the term quadrilateral. Quote, Outler's understanding of the role of experience in Wesley's theology, then, is quite particular. It's not any experience that a person has. It's the distinctively Christian experience of assurance of the forgiveness of one's sins. It is the experience of the witness of the Spirit. Wesley was quite fond of citing Romans 8.16 to illustrate this. Quote, It is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. End of quote. If we are going to think Methodist-wise with John Wesley, then, the experience of new birth is necessary. Jesus said it rather plainly in John 3. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say, you must be born again. It's the Spirit of God who gives us accurate understanding of the Scriptures. Without the Spirit's help, we are without a clue as to understanding God's ways or words. So, where Wesley and informed spiritual understanding are concerned, there is no such thing as experience born of having lived a certain number of years, or the knowledge gained from making mistakes, or having investigated this or that. It also has nothing to do with having been in church all your life, or even attended seminary. None of that is bad, But none of that counts in the slightest without God's Spirit taking up residence in your soul. That is a condition of spiritual blindness. You need a little more light. For you today, if you'd like that light in your soul, it's as profoundly simple and life-changing as repenting of sin, telling God you're sorry and meaning it, and inviting God to take over your life with a prayer that says just that. A final word today from the beloved Apostle John. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all wickedness. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.